Welcome back to the Origins game. It's time now to welcome three new players so we can begin round two. Players, please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Jim Corcus. I'm a junior high school teacher, and I think my kids are probably going to have a lot of fun seeing me try to answer questions rather than ask them. For sure they are, Jim. Nice to have you with us. Okay. And you are? Hi, Bob. I'm Sandy Zuckerman. I'm a reserve police sergeant, and I think my colleagues are going to enjoy this, too. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're a, a police sergeant? Reserve police sergeant, yes. How do you get those big guys to behave? And are, how, do you haul them in? Just show them who's boss. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I won't ask you how you show them, but that's all right. <laughs> Sir. Hi, Bob. My name's Kevin Bickford, and I'm a professional clown, and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> You've come to the right place. Okay. Nice to have you all with us. Doctor, are you ready for this quiz? I'm ready, Bob. I don't think you even know the origin of the word quiz, do you? Hey, I know a little bit about a lot of things. You're not the only guy who knows things. I do know what quiz means. A quiz, uh, it came from an Irishman who made up the word as a practical joke, and then 24 hours later, all of Dublin was using that word quiz. That's where it came from, so there. That's absolutely true. I know it. But you don't get any points. Now, here's what's going to happen. I'll ask the question. Dr. O will give the answers. You decide whether the answer is true or false. You understand how that goes? Okay, if you're ready to play, here's your first one. Dr. O, you know, we've all come to love seeing your mug up there on that great big screen. I have a feeling there's a mug question coming up, there Bob. There is a mug question, exactly what it is. The human face is sometimes referred to as a mug. Now, can you tell me why? Well, quite simply, the term was originated by my favorite author, William Shakespeare. In King Lear, Act Two, Scene Three, the Queen referred to one of her children as, and I quote, Mother's Ugly Girl. Ah, Mother's Ugly Girl. M for Mother, Ugly, U, and Girl, G, M-U-G. That's what he says. Lock in your answers. Tell us if you think that is true or false. <laughs> Boy, they don't believe a word you say, you old weird guy. Is it true or false? Well, the carving of human faces on the outside of wooden drinking mugs led to the origin of that one, Bob. Shakespeare had nothing to do with it, and my answer was false. They were right. All right. Good. You did good that time. All right, let me try another one on you. Here's a perfect question for nobody's fool. Dr. O, what is the origin of April Fool's Day? Well, Bob, April 1st was President Andrew Jackson's birthday, and that's the day all his friends used to send him joke gifts. The tradition's caught on, and that's how April Fool's Day got its start. Andrew Jackson's birthday, April 1, they used to send him joke gifts. That's how it all started. Lock in your answers, please. Everybody says, that's a lot of malarkey, too. They don't believe... It must be your eyes. You have, you have dishonest eyes, I think. True or false? Before the year 752 A.D., the new year was celebrated on April 1st. When our present-day calendar came into use, people kept the old April 1st tradition around just for laughs. My Andrew Jackson story was a lot of malarkey. It's false. All right. Once again, you score. Everybody has two correct answers. Remember, it takes three to win this game. It's time I got down some brass tacks now, Dr. O. The term getting down to brass tacks originated in country stores, where proprietors hammered brass tacks as measurement markers into their counters, so they didn't have to hold up material and estimate yardage. They could get it down to brass tacks and measure it accurately. Okay, you heard what he said, how they measured off the yardage and such. Lock in your answers, please. Everybody says that's... Are you all going together? <laughs> Everybody says it's a true answer. If it is true, we'll have a three-way tie for first place. Dr. O, can we break this tie or not? Well, that countryfied form of measurement was as accurate as my answer, which happened to be true, Bob. Oh, it is true. All right, everybody gets three. Okay. All three contestants have three correct answers. That means we have a tie. We've got a tiebreaker question. Now, here's what's about to happen, gang. In front of you is a lockout button. The first one to hit that button and answer our question correctly will win the round. Keep your hands to your sides, and here we go with the question. The original name for this insect was Flutterby. What's it called now? Who locked in? It's Jim. Butterfly. You got it right. It's Butterfly. Jim, you're the All right. Sandy and Kevin. Well, thank you very much for being on our game. We have a nice prize for the two of you. And thank you for being on the Origins game, and bye-bye. All right, Jim. Oh. <laughs> you earned it, man. You've got 500 points now, Jim. And now it's time for you to go to the movies. I want you to take a look at the big screen over here because that's a portion of the subject of your movie origin. 100 points if you can guess the subject of that picture. 
And I'll take 100 points away if you're wrong. So do you want to play or do you want to pass? I'll take a chance. You can take a chance, okay? I'm going to go for the 600. What my is dad the says six is my lucky number today. I'll say ham actor. Ham actor? It is the subject of your movie. Ham actor. You're right. Okay. <laughs> Good indeed. Okay, now you've got 600 points. I'm going to give you a chance to pick up an additional 300 points if you can correctly answer the question posed to you in the movie we're all about to see. I want you to watch carefully now, Jim, and you'll have to decide if what you see is or is not the true origin of the term ham actor. You know, back in uh, Shakespeare's day, in Elizabethan England, all the world was a stage, and everybody tried to get in the act. It's true. You know, there were actors and actresses of, uh, you know, of every persuasion. And uh, I wouldn't mind persuading a few of them myself, but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, well, the audience gave some a hand. They often gave others the works. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the food, I gotta tell you, the food was always welcome to these hungry actors. Especially if it were ham. Because after dinner, they would use the leftover ham fat to wipe off their makeup. So, thus, the term ham actor comes from the performer who used ham fat to wipe off his makeup and to clean up his act. <laughs> okay, Jim, you've got 600 points. You now have a chance to make an additional 300 points if you can answer the question correctly. The How question else? is, is that a true or false story they're telling you? How else would Miss Piggy get her makeup off? I say it's true. You think it's true, all right. If it's true, you will end up with 900 points. Let's find out now the scam about the ham. Let's turn to our own resident, Sir Francis Bacon. Dr. O, would you join us, please? Oh, oh after that, after that rasher of humor, I'd better get right to the point, Bob. <laughs> Back in the day of the immortal bard, William Shakespeare, a close friend of mine, ham fat was cheap, and most actors did, in fact, use it to remove their makeup. And you know what? It worked. Hence the true origin of the term ham actor. It's true. Jim, you're number 900 points. All right. That means that, Jim, you're going to join us in just a few moments for our big art and game playoff. We'll be back with more when we come back after these words. Don't go away. Welcome back. It's playoff time now on the Origins game, and we've got Kathy and Jim back with us. Kathy has 700 points, Jim has 900 points, and now you're both going to see our final movie, Origin, and if you give the correct answer, we'll triple your points. The player with the most points wins the game, gets those points converted into dollars, but if no one answers the question correctly, then the high point winner will take their existing points in cash. So right now, let's ask our metal marvel, Dr. O, to fill us in on the subject of our final movie, Origin. Dr. O. <coughs> There was a young lady from Doomers who had to leave home because of rumors. To the shock of the town, she was wearing no gown, but her honor was saved by her bloomers. Is that right? And that's the subject of today's final movie, Origin. What, a limerick? No, bloomers! Oh, I didn't know. Okay. Players, what's going to happen now is you're going to see this movie, and you're going to see three possible answers for the origin of bloomers. Only one of them is correct. So watch your screen carefully and look for the three clues as we bring you the movie origin of Bloomers. In the late 1800s, a Paris couturier created a huge scandal by designing a new kind of bathing suit for women and a new national pastime for men. Now, these baggy swimming trousers became the rage on the French Riviera, where Madame and Mademoiselle and an occasional... <clears throat> peculiar monsieur wore them to go wading in the blue sea or as the French say le blue mer soon word of the lady swim trunks reached America this early woman's liver named Mrs. Bloomer thought the pants represented a newfound freedom in the woman's movement as well as a great place to hide skinny legs but the baggy trousers' popularity didn't soar until famed journalist Nellie Bly wore them in her balloon trip around the world. Soon, 
Hot air balloonists everywhere were wearing these ballooning pants. Or, as they call them, balloonists. All right, players, the question is now, did bloomers get their name from A, Le Bloomer, B, Mrs. Bloomer, or C, Ballooners? Players, lock in your answers. Both of you say that it's B. All right, we're going to find out now what the true story is from the irrefutable Dr. O. Yes? Now, Bob, the Blue Mare story and the Nellie Bly story were both a lot of hot air, which means the answer is B, Mrs. Bloomer. That means that, Jim, you're the winner of the game with 900 points. We triple your points to 2,700 points. Jim, today you win $2,700 on the RG game. All right, thank you very much. Kathy, we have a nice prize for you. Thanks for playing our game. Jim, congratulations to you. Thanks to all of our players, and thanks to you, Dr. Rowe. You've been wonderful. You know that. I'll see you next time on Bob Eubanks. Bye-bye.